welcome to the Know Yourself channel where making astrology known and understandable is the number one priority. I am the Scottish astrologer and in this video I am going to read to you an old explanation of how dreaming works and this is from a man called Nicholas Culpepper who is a very smart man. He was a botanist, herbalist, physician, astrologer and writer and is the man responsible basically for translating the old ancient medical texts that were all written in Latin, translating them into English, okay, for the common man to be able to heal himself, okay, so that's who you have to thank for it. Before that, it was all in Latin and the common man who spoke English uh, couldn't understand Latin, so he couldn't understand how to heal himself even having the books at hand, okay. This man is who everyone needs to thank for bringing it to the common man, translating it into English. Great man. And a true local hero of his time, okay? And a big influence on mine also. Culpepper wrote this explanation for how dreams work, okay? In his Ephemeris for the year 1651. And it's a brilliant and logical explanation, and I'm sure you will all agree that's why I wanted to share it with you, okay? Now this is what Culpepper had to say regarding how dreams work. Okay, he begins by stating, okay, this is now me reading what he wrote. The intellective resides in the brain with the pyameter, okay, within the pyameter, and it is governed generally by mercury. Now, the intellective is divided into imagination, judgment, and memory. Now, imagination is seated in the fore part of the brain. It is hot and dry in quality, quick, active, always working. It receives vapours from the heart, okay, and coins them, turns them into thoughts. Now, it never sleeps, okay, imagination never sleeps, but always is working, okay, both when a man is sleeping and is awake. Now, only when judgment is awake, it regulates the imagination, which runs at random when judgment is asleep, okay, and forms any thought according to the nature of the vapour sent up to it, okay? Now pause and go back and re-listen to what I had to say to get the general gist, if you like, because it's interesting, truly really important that you do. Now Mercury is out of the question, the disposer of it. Now it means Mercury is definitely 100% the disposer of it. Now, a man may easily perceive his judgment asleep before himself many times, and then he shall perceive his thoughts run at random. Now, judgment always sleeps when men do, but imagination never sleeps. Memory sometimes sleeps when men sleeps, and sometimes it does not. So then, when memory is awake and the man asleep, then memory remembers what apprehension coins, and that is a dream. Okay, so there's the explanation. That's what a dream is, that's how it works. The thoughts would have been the same if memory had not been awake to remember it. Okay. Now these thoughts are commonly I mean in sleep when they are purely natural, framed according to the nature of the humour called complexion, which is predominant in the body, and if the humour be pecking, it is always so. That's him going on to explain how a person's complexion is determined through his dreams also, it's linked with his dreams, it can be seen through the type of dreams a man has, his astrological complexion. And in fact, I just made a video 
reading to you a poem, a 400 year old poem that is all about how the dreams are linked with your astrological complexion. So give that a watch, very interesting video also. Good poem as well. Now Culpepper continues to say, so that is one of the surest rules to know a man's own complexion by his dreams. I mean a man void of distractions or deep studies. This most assuredly shows Mercury to dispose the imagination. As also because it is mutable applying itself to any object. As Mercury's nature is to do. For then the imagination will follow its old bent. For if a man be bent upon a business. His apprehension will work as much when he is asleep and find out as many truths by study as when the man is awake and perhaps more too because then it is not impeded by ocular objects. So that's what Nicholas Culpepper had to say regarding how dreams work in his ephemeris for the year 1651. I thought it's something I should share with everyone because it's not something a lot of people will ever come, come across in their whole life. Okay, it's only basically astrology nerds, if you want to call it that, like me, who go and do the research and love reading all the old stuff about the subject. Like, it's my passion. So I'll come across these golden gems that I think people need to hear that's interesting and then it can become public knowledge, you know, properly. Uh, the more people share it, the more people become aware of it. And it will raise our frequencies in the long run as humanity can grow our knowledge. As humanity as a whole. Okay, proper, old knowledge, good knowledge. Hidden gems. Okay, folks. I think that's all for this video. Please like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell at the right hand side of the subscribe button to get reminded and updated when I post new videos. Otherwise, you may not even get shown in your recommended feed when I do upload new videos if you don't hit the bell. That's just the way all the systems work on YouTube these days. So, if you want to be constantly updated, hit the bell. Okay guys, that's all. Please take care. Hope you enjoyed.